So who here, by show of hands, remembers the Bob Hope Christmas specials? So over 40 years, comedian Bob Hope did his share, share to spread Christmas cheer to members of the US military, those who were located on bases in US territories and states, and also bases throughout the world. But he also, um, he also did some, some work, some presentations, some, some shows on the front lines in many of the wars. From World War II, he started in Germany. So from World War II all the way to Operation Desert Shield, Bob showed up with his friends like Raquel Welch and Neil Armstrong and Sammy Davis Jr. to bring some laughs and nostalgia and happiness to these service men and women who were facing death every moment of their time away on the front lines through war and every single minute that they were on the, the front lines, right? They were facing death. That's what war is. Could you imagine that the relief that the stories and the jokes and the songs brought these weary troops during that one afternoon of entertainment pulling them away from their fears and worry of fighting and death. Those few hours of not having to focus on kill or be killed. Those few hours of experiencing some happiness in such a wretched environment. Today, we are talking about Advent joy. And when we think of war, it's difficult to imagine joyfulness in such an environment, isn't it? But you know what? I need to keep it real. I wonder if joy could always be found. Do we think that joy could always, always be found? Because when we think of war and all that it is and all that it does, when we think of the trauma it causes, it's so hard to imagine that joy could ever be found again after that experience. And it's also the same with so many others who have experienced trauma in their lives that they haven't healed from, especially trauma from childhood that you've grown up and, and the trauma has remained. Do you think that joy could ever be found? Could always be found? This Advent joy we are talking about today empowers us to push through circumstantial situations and to bring us to a place where the Holy One dwells. And that is the place where real joy could be found. That is the joy we are talking about as we, as we celebrate every year at this time. This joy is the promise that the new baby brings. It's honestly no simple matter. Advent is a phenomenal time. And I say it, I've been saying it, it's a time of possibility. Seriously, it, it, it sounds cliche when we say, I wish you the hope of Advent, or I wish you the peace of Advent, or I wish you the joy of Advent. 
and I wish you the love of Advent. But when we really dig deep, when we really look at it, that is the promise of the one that we're waiting for, that we wait for each year, is the birth of the Christ child, what that we celebrate every year, is to remind us that those things are possible. They're not just cliche. I am in no way minimizing the impact of war, whether it's the war of the worlds or the personal war that we fight every day of our lives. But I'm here to tell you that the promise of the, the, the coming Christ, the anointed one, is that, all, is that it to all of us united anointed ones, because we are all anointed, and I'm not talking about last week's anointing, I'm talking about the anointing that we receive from our birth from the Holy One. But all of us have the capacity to live in unspeakable joy that surpasses all brutality and all pain. All things become possible. Verse 8 to 10 of Isaiah 35, our scripture for today, talks about a restoration of the people of Yahweh that is made possible by the birth of the Messiah. And oh, what a promise it is for us at this time when we are seeking peace and comfort in this world of uncertainty. Oh, what a promise it is that we could sink our teeth into. The scripture says, there will be a highway for those of us who are seeking. And it will be a safe and sacred path to walk. And there will be nothing destructive along this highway. And only the ones who choose love will get to walk it. And everlasting joy will crown their heads and gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Today, we are talking about everlasting joy that defies our circumstantial situation. I remember the first time I read the difference between joy and happiness. I was in class and sometimes I zone out in class. You, you know, I just completed my studies this year. I don't always listen, right? Sometimes I th I'm in Winnipeg and sometimes I wonder what Tila's up to in Windsor and, and, and what's my mom up to. So, but, but I remember when it was like an aha moment. The, the light bulb went on when we were discussing the difference between joy and happiness and the realization that joy is not dependent upon circumstances like happiness is. Happiness depends on good happenings. So for instance, if I get a raise, I am happy. If I get a new grandchild, I am happy. If the weather is good, I'm really happy. If I get my car fixed and it didn't cost me very much, oh, I'm happy. If my health is good, if that diagnosis comes back and it's, I never know whether to say negative or positive. If the diagnosis comes back favorably, I am happy. But circumstances have a tendency to change, don't they? We could be happy this morning and receive some sad news or some bad news in the afternoon, which totally changes our circumstance. And we become worried and sad and scared. 
or circumstance could change in a matter of a minute. When we receive bad news, our happiness becomes destroyed. We're not happy anymore. We're now sad and lonely and sad and worried, right? And then we could receive another phone call in the afternoon, which totally restores our happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. It depends on what's happening in our lives at the time. But joy is different. Joy, on the other hand, defies circumstances. It has nothing to do with what's happening in the moment. We can have joy in spite of difficult situations because joy is an attitude. It is a way of being. Joy is a spiritual reality that is anchored in our source of love. I once heard a minister say, and it was brilliant, that happiness is like a thermometer. It registers conditions. But joy is like a thermostat. It regulates, it regulates conditions. Okay, so the first one, happiness registers conditions. Joy regulates conditions. Isn't that powerful? Joy is an inside job. Joy has nothing to do with what's going on out there. Joy is an inside job. Can you say that with me? Joy is an inside job. A Facebook friend shared a chart the other day to check on how her friends are, were doing. And so there are four categories. The first category is, I'm thriving, I got this. The second one is, I'm surviving, but something isn't right. The third one is, I'm struggling, I can't keep this up. And the fourth one is, I'm in crisis. I cannot survive this. And you're supposed to say which one you're feeling at the moment. And I sat with that chart for a while. I sat and I looked at it and I sipped my coffee. And I sat with it because I am struggling. Me personally, right now in my life, as I stand before you, I'm in struggling phase. I'm struggling with my health quite a bit, and only Polly knows and um, a few others. Most of you would not know that last year, a year ago at this time, I was quite ill. I, was, I ended up in the hospital. I was caught up in a vicious cycle of insomnia, panic attacks, and migraines and they were feeding off each other and I could not get out of the cycle it was so bad that I hadn't slept for four days and I ended up in the hospital and I don't think I quite recovered from that episode so December I, I remember Christmas Eve I had such a panic attack. I thought that my heart had been ripped from the arteries. That's how bad it was, Christmas Eve night. And I was so scared. I got Tila from my daughter from her room and we camped out in the living room together and we slept there. Well, she slept, I was in panic mode. Um, and Christmas day, poor Tila, Christmas day, Tila had to cook Christmas supper because I was so sick. I don't think I ever totally recovered from that. And in fact, I am struggling because it feels like it's happening again. It, it, it's, I'm at the beginning stages of it. I have been dealing with migraines for the past six weeks. Six weeks of my, just 
not real pain, but pressure at the top of my head and the base of my skull. I feel like I'm struggling. But this is the thing. I do not identify with the definition in my friend's Facebook chart of struggling I can't keep up. I am frustrated and I am fatigued, but I can't keep this up because I have hope. I can keep this up because I have joy. I, I mean, I want it to end, but I'm fighting with it. I can keep this up because I have hope. I have joy. I am struggling and I'm talking with my doctors and we think we've come up with some new something. I don't know. It's a, I will know in a few weeks if it's working. But not for one second of these crushing headaches and these panic attacks. Not for one second do I not see the beauty of life all around me. Not for one nanosecond. Not for one second do I not giggle at something funny, even with the crushing migraines, or sing a song that I like. Christmas Day, um, when I was so sick last year, I put on the Nat King Cole album, and I shakily stood in my living room with Tila sitting there, and I said, you got to sit there, and I sang the whole album. And sometimes I had to sit through it, but I was going to sing that whole album. Not for one second will I not dance if I hear a song that I like. I don't care what condition I'm in. Not for one second am I not grateful to be serving in this amazing ministry with such wonderful and supportive people. My good, every day I wake up and I think, my gosh, I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed to serve this congregation in Trinity. In the gripping pain of a headache, I still carry a song in my heart and hope in my mind and gratitude on my tongue. But it's because I'm a joyful person. I've always been. And although situations make me sad or brokenhearted or worried or fearful, there is always something in my heart that allows me to hope that allows me to smile, that allows me to feel some sort of comfort. I always feel as though I'm going to be okay. Always. And I always feel as though things could be fixed. That is the joy of the Holy One that stays with me all year round. And quite frankly, that is the joy which the birth of Christ replenishes every year at this time in my life. I have one of those, it's not as beautiful as this, but Tila and I have this little makeshift advent, advent wreath at home. That, and we light, I go home every, nah, every night in, in Advent, and we light the candles, and for years, since Tila was little, we light the hope candle, and we talk about how we could see hope in our lives. Her little stories of hope at three years old were very interesting. And, and the next week, we light the one for peace, and we talk about when we felt peaceful. And the next week, we light the one in And it, that means something to, to, to me and to us. This season is so special because I really believe it's the season of possibilities. Anything could happen. We talk about the Christmas miracle. 
I believe in it. Anything could happen. It is possible to find joy or to have joy restored in your heart. I journeyed with a woman who fell into deep depression, seemingly out of the blue, and the doctors had a hard time figuring it out. And she told me that she had always had joy in her life, but doubted that she would ever find joy again. And after years and months of trying to find the right antidepressants that worked for her brain, that aligned with the chemicals in her brain, they finally found it. It took months after that for her to have her joy restored. Now I know that finding joy is not an easy undertaking if you haven't always had it especially if it's been taken from you through trauma. There's another line there that's important, but the printer blocks it out. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out this line, and I know it's really important, but I can't read it. <laughs> so I'm missing a very important point. <laughs> To this sermon today. <laughs> you know, we've got to be intentional in pursuing and maintaining joy. We got to seek joy. There's an Anglican priest, Reverend Marilyn Murphy. She gives a few suggestions on ways that we could nurture our joy that we could pursue it and, and nurture it in our hearts. So the first one is complete what you start. Enlarge your interests. Consistently express gratitude to the people in your life. Find reasons to laugh. Be kind to others. Read or listen to something inspirational every day or spend time out in nature. Focus on the positive. Extend a helping hand when you can. Jot down five reasons to be happy and keep adding to the list. This one is a big one. Overlook pettiness. Gosh, sometimes we're so petty, aren't we? <laughs> Overlook pettiness and jealousy. Another big one. Forgive. And be open to being forgiven. Look forward instead of backwards. Develop a closer relationship with the Spirit because that relationship will give you all you need to have joy in any circumstance. I know that this list, if you're looking for it, I will make sure Pauline has it and and so you could call the office and it will be there. I know that some of us have lost our joys, perhaps over time, perhaps because of all the stuff we've had to endure. And I know that some of us may be putting on a smiling face day after day, but deep within, we have no real joy. And I know that over the years, we've been getting by by just enjoying little moments of happiness that we've managed to hold. I know that that is reality for some people. What I'm doing today as I stand here, I am asking you to not give up on experiencing a depth of joy 
that is available to you. It's yours. Joy is available to you. Joy is your birthright. It is yours. Claim it. Joy that carries you through all the circumstances, whether unpleasant or pleasant. I am praying that your faith and hope be strengthened, be restored, that you will believe and that you will persevere to a time when everlasting joy will crown your head. When gladness and joy will overtake every aspect of your life. That is Advent's promise to every single one of us. May it be so. Amen.